the first signs of the cataclysm that formed Jezero Crater started to appear on the long drive by Perseverance up its rim. Now on the other side, Perseverance is encountering rocks clearly formed in the fiery aftermath of a giant impact event on this episode of Mars Guy. Asteroids and comets and pieces of them have helped shape the surfaces of planetary objects in the solar system since it formed more than four and a half billion years ago. Impact craters are common on Mars, leading to the appearance of a surface like the Moon, where they were first recognized through telescopes by astronomers on Earth. Earth has nearly 200 now recognized impact craters, but they typically are much harder to see thanks to the way they're filled in by water and sediments, covered in vegetation, and removed by the recycling of its crustal plates. Jezero Crater was partially filled in by volcanic rocks after it formed nearly 4 billion years ago. It also was filled by water for a relatively short time, which flowed in through Noret Favalis and delivered sediments that were explored by Perseverance. Now it's driven up and over the crater rim to explore different rocks on the outside. On its first stop there, Perseverance observed an outcrop that appears to be composed of impact ejecta. Here's Mars Guy for scale. The mix of cobbles and boulders and a matrix of finer grain materials is consistent with debris thrown out during the impact event. The physics of impact events is now fairly well understood thanks to geologic observations of their aftermath on Earth, supported by small-scale simulations in labs and computer modeling. Following the compressive force of the impactor and the shock waves it sends out, the ground essentially responds with an equal but opposite force hurling material outward. And because the impact energy is so great, it can even melt solid rock. So the ejecta is a mix of melted and shattered rocks. That mixture may be on display in another spot observed by Perseverance, this one viewed from its current location. From here, Perseverance used the telescope of SuperCam to capture a mosaic of images of this outcrop just over 100 meters away. The jumble of cobbles and boulders is clearly evident, looking like they could have been delivered by raging floodwaters except that they're located on the rim of a large crater, where this would not be possible. There's also a sort of carapace of material on top, with striations that look a bit like those of shatter cones, a feature of impact craters on Earth formed by the extreme shock pressures. But I suspect that these features are the result of sandblasting by wind. I wonder, though, if this material is impact melt which can be glassy like that in lava flows formed by rapid cooling. The rocks that Perseverance is parked on also appear consistent with impact tights, that is, rocks formed from impact ejecta. They look like they're made of gravel, which may have been emplaced ballistically or maybe rained down from a plume of debris caught up in a towering mushroom cloud that formed in the seconds after impact. Perseverance has used its drill and a braiding bit to grind into these rocks. The close-up view with the Watson camera provides a nice look at the gravelly texture that resembles impact heights. Inside the abrasion patch, the texture is harder to recognize thanks to the void spaces probably produced when the abrading bit plucked out pieces of rock. As of the posting of this episode, no coring operation has happened. But with all those bits of rock that predate the ones sampled by Perseverance inside Jezero Crater, a sample of impact height could be a scientific gold mine if returned to Earth. And that would be a great way to take advantage of nature's cataclysm. <laughs>